That's cool. Yeah. It, I mean, we are live, technically, but let's be clear here. It is January the 20th. CIG haven't come back from their well-earned vacation. There's no real Star Citizen news. Um, so, hi. Yeah. Sure. Uh, my name is Frank Sherbert. Um, hi, Frank. Hi. Something, I don't know, a joke about ice cream. Is Sherbert ice cream? Uh, yes. No. Well, as close as you want to. It's it's frozen dessert product. Mm. Hello, I'm a frozen dessert product. What's the difference? Is there a difference between a, a what did you call it? A, a what? A sherbet? A sherbet has no um, no dairy products in it. Oh, so it's a sorbet. Um, I believe so. Yeah, I believe that's, that's how ice. it works. Let's just use it ice. Yes. Oh no, I'm wrong. Sherbert does have I don't know what Sherbert is versus ice cream in because it does have dairy products in it. So what's the difference between ice cream and Sherbert? Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Yes. Um Hey Darge. Sherbert is Oh Happy New Year. The, the primary ingredient in Sherbert is fruit, not cream. It's oh. has cream added to it. Interesting. In that Where case, what's, what's then the difference between ice cream, sherbet, and gelato? Because that is its Gelato's own Italian. thing. As... <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> um, gelato is similar to ice cream, but typically contains less cream and air. Ooh. So it's Closer to Sherbert. Yeah, closer to Sherbert, but not quite there. But <laughs> not <laughs> sorbet. Fucking ice cream, you bastards. <laughs> we did Funny it. thing is, I hate ice cream. <laughs> uh, all forms, even ice cream, sorbet and sherbet? Husk. I don't like ice cream. I don't like, like sweet things. There are I love, are like I love. It's intolerant that eat ice cream because it's so good. Yeah, cast. So why don't you get like you know bacon flavored ice cream? Hey Pixie, don't like it. the The best type, well, it's not even ice cream. The best thing is lemon gelato because it tastes like lemons. It's amazing. I love why don't you lemon just gelato. Eat fucking lemon. I do on a regular basis. Right. Well, go eat a fucking lemon and let the rest <laughs> of us have fun with ice cream. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Darge is oh, banned Eric. It's a broken Oreo and my fucking vanilla <laughs> ice cream. I want huge chunks of cookie dough in my fucking ice cream. I want <laughs> fucking bit. I don't want to eat fruit. I don't want to be reminded that I'm supposed to be eating healthy. This body's a fucking temple, mate. It's been abandoned, overgrown, and forgotten by humanity. And damn well, I want to maintain that. If your body, your body is a temple, everyone's free to enter. Very bad. Only those of the cloth. Ah, uh, yes, yes, uh, Aaron? Your names are very interesting on the stream. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, I looked at mine, and then I looked at yours, and I was like, okay, the third one has to be right, because if our two are right, then the third <laughs> one's right. Nope. <laughs> there was another... Possibility you hadn't counted on. You had, full, full. you had two chances to get it right. <laughs> two chances to get it right. And somehow you uh... found secret hidden option number three. That's right. Look, oh, that was impressive. Look, Fullo Stan, <laughs> you say donations strongly encouraged. I say donations strongly discouraged by our actions every week. <laughs> hey everybody welcome it's Damn right a different it is, year Josh. happy new year everyone i hope you all had a great winter holiday uh nakara i'm actually really glad to see that you survived the minus hey, 50 hey, hell hey, wait that... a minute wait a minute before what? you go off there with your fucking northern hemisphere propaganda we hope you're enjoying the summer as well potentially yes 
Enjoy getting roasted in Australia. Yeah, you No, I hate Northern <laughs> Hemisphere supremacist, <laughs> you. <laughs> and yes, yes, David, I did survive the minus 50 for like four days. Yeah. Look, um, I'm by, sorry. You know what? You know how we survived it? We stayed inside. <laughs> Not leaving the house? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, I'm sorry. It's not my fault that this is clearly the better hemisphere. Oof. Hopefully we don't have too got... many Australians wow. watching. <laughs> Look, if we get full winter, like snow and stuff, and summer. <clears throat> Southern hemisphere winter do doesn't know, get snow. Can, are you, do you think seasons are exclusive to the northern <laughs> hemisphere? Yeah, Apparently. obviously. Like, the southern hemisphere is just this barren wasteland of summer and eternal hell. That's Australia. <laughs> yes. Yes, Not exactly. Everywhere is Australia. Wait, wait, uh, hang on. You're telling me that there's places other than Australia in the southern hemisphere? Because I thought that the southern hemisphere was literally restricted to just like, Australia. Most of the continent of Africa <laughs> is in the southern hemisphere. Yeah, and South really? America. And there's this big ice cube down there, too. For now. Some, some, some people actually, like, float around on it. There's there's one place that's so fucking cold, they called it Chile. <laughs> I like it. Uh, you're in fine form, my friend. Oh, it's been too long. Also, everybody... <laughs> I hide my pain. Speaking of it being too, being too long, uh, it's basically almost exactly to the day nine years. Oh my god, it is. Was it yesterday? Is it the it's, 19th? I think it's right around the 20th. I don't know. A couple, Give or take a couple days. It was, was it? It was the end of January 2015. I need to... You guys talk about something. I need to... I need to put up a banner for a second. Give me a second. <laughs> okay, we have to talk a about something. Bruce like Shiver. Um, what is your favorite Christmas star citizenship? You <laughs> bastard. <laughs> oh, great, yeah. Start with a fucking easy one, why don't you? <laughs> Well, I had to give him some time to come up with this banner, you know? Shit, dude. <laughs> Why would it... I uh... think you could deck out the Polaris to be filled with decks of holly. tra la 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 uh, Polaris is a very good name for a Christmas yeah. ship. Yeah. Right? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. You could stick a Polaris on the top of your tree. <laughs> that would be a very big tree. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> oh, well, man. you never know what Dodge might have up his sleeve for upcoming Christmas. Now that I've said that, get your orders. Good point. In. Good point. Yep. Yeah, we need to. Uh... Yeah, fair enough. Um, now I actually genuinely want Star Citizen Christmas decorations. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great, actually. There's so many ships you could just have the little ships all over your all over your tree. It'd be great. Yeah. Oh man, that would be fantastic. What's your favorite Christmas themed Star Citizen ship then, Eric of Nakara Clan? <clears throat> I think I'm gonna be really boring here, but it's definitely the one that came to mind. I'm gonna say the Aurora. Oh, that's yeah. Okay, that's a fair name for it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I can see it. You know, I'm you got the, that... the winter and the northern lights and all, yeah. Yeah, the whole thing going yeah, yeah. it's yeah. very Christmas, yeah. yeah. What's what's happening? What did I miss? Oh, Nothing. we're just trying to fill time. Oh, okay. <laughs> Excellent. Uh... Uh, <laughs> it, it is it is the best font <laughs> for us. It's it's the most appropriate <laughs> font. Forever. I'm going to. Oh, I love it. oh man. Oh, anyway. okay. Um, 
I had some things I was going to say. Yeah, I know. I know there were things. You're Shiver, say. are you okay there? You're talk about games I'm trying stuff. to read it on the screen. You know, it's more than six inches says, away, so I'm trying to read what it says. Do you need some bifocals? Long... <laughs> says the longest In running hands. Star Citizen podcast. <clears throat> Until someone informs me that someone else has been doing this longer than us, I am going to believe that it's us, and I am going to do absolutely no research that could uh, <laughs> compromise that belief. Sounds perfect. You know, I mean this, right? I don't mean this to be offensive. I know it's offensive, but I know I'm very, very sorry, and I love since you. Since when have you? Paris. Since when have you cared about being and, offensive? And you're my friend, and I, I, I wish nothing. But good vibes your way. But when you're sat there saying <laughs> with this fucking pretentious beer glass <laughs> and your fucking beer, <laughs> oh, I've never wanted to punch you in the face so hard before. <laughs> so sorry. It's okay. Oh, That's me. Man. That's me to myself on a daily basis. Oh. <laughs> That's a very tall glass. Thank you. Cheers. Uh, so, <clears throat> cheers to everyone. Um, welcome to 2024. Um, should we... No, you know what? It is. Darge is right. Um, I want to talk about something before we talk about Star Citizen. There's a, there's a bunch of stuff I want to talk about Star Citizen. What have we been going... doing for the past 15 minutes? It's only been 12 minutes, and we've been talking about fonts and Christmas, ship. Christmas and, you know, we've been... You know, I love it when we have nothing to fucking work with and we still do a podcast. <laughs> Sorry, it's Why favorite. do we do this to ourselves? Why do we do this to people watching us? <laughs> one, they okay, like it. no, no, I can explain that because one, the people watching us are watching us of their own volition. I haven't, you know, you tied any know of them. You that. That's fair. If anyone is watching this not of your own volition, blink three times. And I'll do nothing at all to help because be I can't used. see it. We could be being used actively right now in anti-hostage negotiations. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking give us the hostages or we keep them going for another six hours. There's one I, where he just I talks about to, fucking do you know ships. What? Do you know what? I wanted to do this podcast. Do you want to know why? Because I missed you, you too. And I missed, I, and I missed our chat. It. I have no regrets. Yep. I'm happy. Agreed. I missed you guys. That's it. So I'm I wanted to, over there to hang going, out. It's 2 a.m. I, I don't know Christmas if that's enough of a well, reason for me to be damage. here. <laughs> but seriously, we will talk about Star Citizen in a moment. But before we do that, and I, I will sort of segue this into Star Citizen. I've got, I got worked all day on this in my mind uh, for 12 seconds. Um, there's sort of a phenomena going on right now in video gaming. Pixie. <laughs> shit, Pixie. It must have been shit what you were watching then. <laughs> a phenomenon? No, it was a phenomenon. Phenomenon. Boop, boo, doo, doo, doo. Phenomenon. Phenomenon. Um, so, Pal World came out. And I know you might think, hey, Pal World has nothing to do with Star Citizen. Uh, and you're right. But I did just spend like seven hours playing Pal World, which is um, sort of a Pokemon survival. Um, <clears throat> Pokemon with machine guns, base building, survival game. Uh, I'm hey, my truck. Playing that right after the stream. <laughs> it's, also, it's on Game Pass. It, it's also on Game Pass, which is great. Uh, my truck. Uh, thank you. 
Thank you, my Drucker. I've got the age now of watching you do that hurts my spine now. It hurts well, his spine too. It hurts my spine to do <laughs> yeah. it. So, um, I'm the fucking anyway. oldest one here. <laughs> Not by a ton. <laughs> it's the only exercise I get. Um, I want to talk about Power World really, qu really quickly because. Thank All you, right, Big C. fine. Oh. Thanks, Big C. <clears throat> He's getting so much exercise now. <laughs> it's great for the arms. Good for the shoulders, you know. Um, in one day of its launch, with very little like expectation coming out of it, um, Pal World hit i think it hit like eight hundred and fifty thousand players concurrently on steam which is like number 10 apparently all time for steam concurrency of players and it's a small little game made by not a very large studio and it's got a lot of problems right now um if you're playing multiplayer uh, you cannot currently name your character. You're just like player 271, player 354. Um, nice. Like, I like, it. like weird, like, like it's, it's not done. It's an early access, uh, but it's great. It's a lot of fun. What, what is, I've tried looking at it. And I'm, I'm still none the wiser as to what the fuck you actually do. Um, let me put it this way. Pal World is the best Pokemon game ever made. So, it's... Have you played Factorio? Yes. Okay, so imagine a game where you get Pokemon, and they've all got, like, statistics and moves that they can do, and things that they can do outside of combat. And then you build yourself a base, and you get your Pokemon working on the base. And you're managing, like, you've got Pokemon that will log and, like, cut down logs. And you get ones that will worse. mine. This is terrible. Why? I love I'm, it. I'm, this, is, this is, like, I was already offended by Pokemon. Because you go, you capture <laughs> wild animals, kidnap yep. them from their environment, yep. and you force them. Now we're, now we're doing yep. forced labor. I love it. It's perfect. Other animals. And now, yeah, it's just gone into fucking full. Just oh, shiver. Pants. What the fuck? You, you can, act, you can you do it nicely. It? What? You can do it you nicely. You can do it nicely. Work for me. Hold on. Free on hold this on. farm, and I shall reap the well, rewards you give of them... your work. Yes, they are slaves, That's but you give them. Capitalism. Yes, it is capitalism. You give them food. You give them, uh, like saunas to rest in and beds. Oh, um, oh we'll just give you bribery. We, we will spend the fruits of your labor in a way that we see fit. You can you also rise, my Pokemon come to storm the palace and burn them. You, bits you of can also paper force them into the labor table. camps and like force them to work at gunpoint until they die of exhaustion. You can also take a butcher knife and cut them up for meat. Um, it's. What the fuck? Yes. <laughs> what? Yeah. I love this. It's completely oh, insane. And it's amazing. Dude. It's um, great. Shiver, I'm gonna post a I'm gonna post a link in chat. Check this out. It's such a great screenshot from this game. <clears throat> um <laughs> they, they... I... Uh, mm. What I need to look at this. What is this? It's like, like, that, yep. It's like yep. the picture before the apocalypse, before the Pokemon <laughs> right. and the Terminators um... rose and had a civil war over who was going <laughs> to kill the remnants of the human race. There's there's a a pal that I recently found. Um, its name is Depresso. Like. <laughs> Depressed espresso. Um, yeah. 
and like other other pals when you send them to like mine rocks yeah, yeah. they like More headbutt it thing. or scratch at it or whatever depresso stands there like this pulls out a, a mining pick it goes to mine um but then you've got like there's like uh hot tubs that they can rest in and when depresso goes and takes a rest in the hot tub it uh floats face down as if it were drowning itself <laughs> Never wow! To a fictional game character more. <laughs> oh, anyway, oh, what I want, I, I I do want to tie this into Star Citizen, but it's like Power World is really really good, and it came out of nowhere and it surprised everyone to the point that um, apparently, oh, it, it'll last. Um, it's, well, they, I mean, they just made all the money overnight, but, um, it sounds like there were, like, if, if Nintendo were litigious about this, they would have had to do it before now. I don't think they can do anything at this point, honestly. You have to really aggressively defend, um, IP. If you don't, and they're not, then a lot of times then you don't win. And they're not... I've been to places like that where I've got to def just aggressively <laughs> defend myself as IP. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... Like, I think it's distinct enough. Like, there's yeah. clear references, but you're allowed to make references. They're not ripping off any direct Pokemon. Uh, they are clearly making fun of it. Yeah. That's allowed. I I don't think there's much that Nintendo can do. The the interesting thing is, like, someone's finally made a good Pokemon game, something that Game Freak hasn't been able to do for twenty years. Um, but what I find particularly interesting is that it's made in Unreal Engine five. Mm -hmm. And apparently at like 1 a.m., well, around this time yesterday, uh, 1 a.m. UK time yesterday, there were a bunch of like emergency meetings set up with Epic because the game on day one of launch had hit, there's, there's apparently like a server limit that Epic has on everything, and when the game passed 700,000 players on Steam, plus however many more on Game Pass, um, yeah. it hit the limits of Epic's servers, and they had to go in and specifically remove limits for this game at 1am so that people could play. <laughs> and I just, like, that's insane! Yep. Yeah, so um for a comparison, it had it fell just short of Baldur's Gate 3 and con on concurrency by 20,000 players. And that's day 1. Yeah. Let's like what's going to happen in a couple of days. Yeah, anyway, so I it's completely crazy. Um, but it's also really interesting to me because it's launched in a fairly unfinished state. Um, there's base building. It's very basic. You've got, like, floors and walls and walls with window. And there's roof pieces, but I can't actually use any of the roof pieces right now because they won't attach to walls. They'll only attach to floors. Like, there's... It's broken. It's launched <laughs> fairly broken, and I don't give a shit because it's so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, but we do know... <laughs> yeah. It's it's funny, Darj, actually. Uh, I really like survival games, and I've been looking at like the couple of survival games that are coming out in the next month. There's Power World, Early Access. Enshrouded, Early Access. And Nightingale, Early Access. 
Um, Nightingale looks really interesting. It looks really interesting, but it's early access. In Shrouded looks really interesting as well because it's a fully voxelized world. You can mine through an entire mountain if you want to get at the enemy from from a like it's looks really interesting. But everything's launching in early access, and the extreme earliness of Pal World's building combined with the success it's having. Does it matter that it's really early? I mean, clearly it doesn't. No, really. And my question for, for you guys and, and for chat is we know that Star Citizen is going to be having base building. We don't yet know really how it's going to work. We know that it's going to, there's one ship that can do it. Um, I don't know if we'll get like hand tools or a land vehicle that can do it or something, but like, how are we going, how is Star Citizen's base building going to launch? And does it matter if it launches, um, let's say, unfinished? Well, of course it will. like everything else we'll get the the first iteration of it and it'll be i if we're lucky i would imagine a few uh prefab structures that we just plonk a transparent blueprint on the ground throw some resources on it and did i and then as it just improves it's going to get hopefully not only visually more interesting where you know, you're literally seeing a building arise, or, or perhaps something subterranean, but you're going to have custom pieces, hopefully, at least to a certain degree, rather than just these prefab structures, so... Mm, Do you I, think I we're going to... Something not necessarily dissimilar from Fallout 4's building system as a baseline... Okay, here's a question. Well, Eric, did you want to chime in? Not yet. Okay. Uh, so here's another question. And they they sort of showed off base building last year in that, like, silo thing being built. Right? Mm -hmm. Are we going to have any ability to, like, build walls ourselves and build ceilings ourselves like in many other survival games like Valheim, Fallout 76, Pal World Now, stuff like that? Or is it just going to be, here's the blueprint, you place down the blueprint and it sort of builds, like, like essentially 3D prints itself from the ground up and you've got that built. Why, why, why can't it be like Sons of the Forest building system? Um, I'm not remembering Sons of the Forest right now, to be honest. Uh, basically, you place down a blueprint and it shows up like a holographic thing on the ground. Right. And no, then no. you you add all the ingredients that need to construct it and then it pops into existence. Well, only a couple of items do that, but the actual buildings, it's like anywhere you can put down... Um, oh, right, it's different for... Free different. space. You just... You chuck down a foundation and then you just start building up from it. That would work. Um, what they, I mean, we can only go by what they showed off, right? Yeah. And by some of their goals in the past that they've talked about. Um, so we know that defense is going to be a thing. So I do expect you to be able to build walls in the way the, like base walls, like, I have a wall around my, you know, my settlement. Right. Defensive wall. <clears throat> um, I don't necessarily expect you at the beginning to be able to build walls for individual structures because I think that they will be modularized that way. And that they will be like, basically the idea will be, you know, you have a blueprint for a structure, the, the blueprint is constructed, then you have that structure. Um, it would not surprise me at all if that is a like custom structures are like um a down the line goal. Um, okay. <clears throat> um, 
I possibly possibly only if you have something like a pioneer and maybe it's like got like custom fabrication, you know, you can make pieces instead of just whole buildings. I'm I kind of agree with Darge that CIG is really into its aesthetic and the likelihood of us being able to build our own stuff is slim. I sort of expect like um, kind of like Starfield, like you be, you can place down halves, like a square hab, a circular hab, and you can place down a connector and place another one with it and like um, connect them all together that way. I don't expect, but then Eric, you're right, like for base walls, like I expect to be able to, or yeah, like Subnautica, you ba build the the sections of your base, right? Mm -hmm. um just um i just wanted to point out something because this is something we did we did see in the presentation at yeah. Physicon. there are currently four different ways of building buildings yeah um there's one that's like super basic it's like a hover trolley it's like a tiny little thing and it can build small buildings um, then there's going to be a currently unnamed vehicle that can build small to medium buildings. Yeah. The RSI Galaxy can do small to large, and then the Pioneer can do everything. Yeah. <clears throat> it's going to be interesting to see what an extra large building is, and why you would want it. Because everyone wants everything to be extra large. I mean... <sighs> what I, I i don't know i think i think that's sort of a, a question though isn't it like what land claims are a thing and you'll be able to build a base in your land claim mm -hmm. is that base going to get attacked on a regular basis like i don't know i'm 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 trying to wonder what what we do with our ability to build in Star Citizen. Because you, you, it like survival oh, games you. survival games are one thing, right? Like the entire point is building your base and surviving and gathering stuff and building it like it's but Star Citizen has so much more that is the point and you're gonna be very rarely like on your own in the middle of nowhere have to build a base to survive. Um I don't know. It's the point of those. Uh, the point of bases, I think, is going to be first of all, people just like the place to have. But secondly, a lot of it's going to be resource production. Um, right. And I think the next part of that is going to be actually manufacturing and selling things. Um, and I think those are the big pieces to it. <clears throat> it's. it's it's got to feed into something. It's got to feed into the gameplay loop rather than just be a mm -hmm. fucking fancy storage or a fancy hangar. Yeah, I, I really think I really think that they're going to tie as many gameplay loops as they can in, into yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, also, like, you could build a hospital, too. If you're like, shit, there's this war happening over here. I'm going to charge people to resurrect them, and I'm going to build well, this hospital. You know, <laughs> that's actually great because do you, do you remember when we were talking about the um, the racetracks and how yeah. it would be great to have a hospital <laughs> and a oh, hangar? No, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Buy the land right close to the racetrack. Plant a hospital on there for respawning and a hangar, so people that would be like mint, right? And charge enough. Um, carry on. I will be right back. Yep. Um. But yeah, base building. Like, yeah, you, you, you can feed into. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely, pretty much every aspect of it. You, you can start off with a very basic, um, a fucking crystal meth shack out there that you start the most basic of chemical reactions in, working your way up to be able to have the same sort of facilities an endeavor does on your base, maybe better or something like that. Yeah, for sure. I wonder if yeah. I want. I mean, that because they're gonna have um, farming modules on the Endeavor, weren't they? At least they've said. I think. Yep. They were gonna... Absolutely, absolutely, they plan to. Yep. There's a whole farming. So thing. you must, 
you could probably do vast fucking acres of farming for whatever you want, be it food, be it to feed into the production chain. So you've got your options. It's, you know, it's Star Citizen, but no one says you don't have to play Farm Simulator. Exactly. Oh, and I, I, I fully expect some people will. Um, that's <clears throat> that's kind of the deal with Star Citizen is that they're trying to. It's a universe simulator essentially. They're trying to um, slowly but surely build in all these gameplay loops so that there's lots of stuff to do. Um, and you can, and hopefully, eventually, you can like legitimately just play for a long time just doing whatever you want. Um, <clears throat> but, um, yeah, so I think those are the big things. I, um, I think a lot of the early stuff is going to be focused around mining bases. Um, mining is already, a, you know, an established thing. It's got, it's got, uh, gameplay loops attached to it. And um, there's an obvious reason, like, you can scan for, for, like, ore veins, and then you can place down a big mining thing there. Like, it all sort of makes sense right off the bat. Also, the, um, also the, um, uh, the hydroponics tower thing that they built makes a lot of sense, too. Um, that ties into the whole farming mechanic. I, um, Yeah. Um, I think it makes tons of sense in the universe. I really do. Re uh, the thing that fascinates me most, though, is the hint that they want to expand this into space stations in the future, like player space stations. I think that is yes, super cool, and I think that is um, potentially going to be one of the most interesting bits of Star Citizen in the long term. They've got to be very careful with how they handle that as well, because with very, the way that very they're going to do um, navigation as well, being mm -hmm. able to just aim yourself somewhere, you want to carefully eye up how easy it is to either hide um, a player-owned starbase or how easy it is to see a player-owned starbase. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how they control where you're allowed to build it. Yes. I mean, like, I, I would imagine that high, I don't know even if if it's particularly high sec if they'd even let you build a structure Probably um, in there, but if it sort of goes down and it would be like, you, you couldn't build something to rival um, Stanton or anything like that, but you could certainly put in a sh little refueling station or something, maybe. Yeah, I have an idea. I think okay. it would be cool if um I think it would be cool if they uh came up with a system and I don't know if they're this is where where they're gonna go. Probably not. But one of the ways they can manage it is by having like orbital slots around each uh planet and moon. And you basically buy a slot, if you know what I mean. Um yeah. kind of like a land claim. Like I purchased the ability to put a space station around this moon or whatever. And kind of like right now, the way that the way the geostationary orbit works right now, because you can't just have infinite, because there's actually a limited number of possible spaces in geosynchronous orbit around the Earth, you actually have to like get a license to to occupy one of the spots. Yeah, and I think that's basically what I'm thinking is like you have to have a license to build a space station around this part of this planet or moon. Um. And I, I think that that would be a cool way to go about it. And it, it gets manageable, right? So, interestingly enough, like, there already is a space station that players can own. It's the Endeavor, right? Yep. Like, the, the back half of the Endeavor, the entire point is for it to be left in space as a base for respawning, as a place. Like, it is a space station. So... With with big engines. <laughs> yeah, but but one but as soon if the the front portion leaves, those engines are inert. Yeah, they sure are. Yeah. So So you you're not wrong. It is it basically is it basically has a space station part of it and a yeah. ship ship part of it. Yeah. Now 
anything more on space stations because I've got a a, a um uh a, a, a segue. No, not a segue. A complete oh. uh like fork in the, like something else entirely like off okay. to, like off in a different direction. A tangent. A tangent. Thank you. I'm. I've got a a tangent. Is everyone ready for a tangent? Yes. Okay. So, PAL world. There are a hundred different PALs, sort of like Pokemon. There were one hundred and fifty originally, and however many after that. Uh, yes, you can have a tanger tangentiary tangerine, um, ten whatever. Uh, God. Um, a tangentiary. A tangentiary. It's like a Satsuma. Yeah, sure. What is that? Is it a bed? It's a tangerine, but it doesn't have any seeds. Oh. Like a seedless clementine. Yeah, but they didn't write a song about it. It wasn't as catchy. Oh, that's fair. Um, <laughs> Pal World has a hundred pals. And you can catch them all, like Pokemon. And then those pals can do things for you. You can have them fight for you. You can, um, you know, you can uh, you can fabricate a machine gun. Servitude? Yeah, but there's like there's a monkey pal, right. and if you build it a uh, submachine gun, then when you're in battle, it can hop up onto your shoulder and fire its submachine gun from your shoulder at the other pals or the, the bad guys that you're trying to kill. Stuff like that. Like, there's there's lots of, of animals to capture, pals to capture, and they've all got uses and things you can do with them. So my question for you both, and for those of you in chat, is how long is it going to take for CIG to one put in fauna and two make their ways to catch them and like when are they going to make Star Citizen into Pokemon is what I'm asking. I don't know if they're going. So to Eric, how are you? How was your New Year? Pretty good. Yeah. I mean, not really, but, I, but I'm trying year. to distract myself from that question. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I'm okay. Gonna, I'm not. So, um, what do we know? We know that you that there will be animals. We know that you will be able to catch them and sell them. Um, you'll also be able to hunt them. Um, will you be able to tame them and have them run laser repeaters uh, chasing after sand people? Um, I don't no, I'm thinking probably not. <laughs> but we do know, we do know that you'll be able to have, uh, like pets on your ship. Yes, but presumably they were, like, they were talking like cats, not yeah. Like, but I am sure there will be a space, space cat. cats with rocket launchers attached to them. No, I, I, okay. <laughs> look, I'm not saying I'm not saying like can we use the animals. <laughs> give them rocket launchers and have them attack. I'm just tying things into Power World because I like Power World. The question really is like, yeah, like what? We don't yet know really what the hunting animal. Here's what I expect. I think fishing okay. will be in. I think hunting will be in. I think catching animals will be in. I think livestock will be in, um, because farms are in. Yeah. Um, I think that might be where it ends. Oh, and I think I think like, yeah. So we it pets. There's a very small chance that they decide to do the mount thing, but I think with ground vehicles they'll probably not bother. I I, I was thinking they could cheat it even worse than that. Be like the space okay. hamster from Mass Effect. It's just just literally a crappy interactable object. Yeah, you get to call your pet and you no. press F on it, and then the hamster. They would not do that. Like, they would not do that. Wait. Yeah, they would not do that. Um, do you think you'll you'll be able to have things like attack dogs that you can have with you and send them off to gnaw on people's legs while you shoot them? Mm. I'm gonna say no. Or I think, uh, like like Muntrucker says, worth 
worthwhile. I don't know if it's worthwhile to spend the resources on making uh, pets that can fight. That's fair. Here's a genuine question, though, and this isn't really a pet, but uh, like carrying capacity is extremely a problem in Star Citizen. We do yes, also is. know that carrying capacity is a real life problem right now, especially for like military um, considerations. Soldiers have to carry a lot in their packs, and there's been a lot of development in the past, you know, 15, 20 years on like those robotic dog things mm -hmm. can we get one of them as I s oh i saw More this likely. documentary once it was black and white it was really weird about this i i don't know i guess they must have been broken because this guy was desperately trying to get away from those weird little dogs didn't make it anyway what's that i think the documentary was called black mirror oh there's oh it. yeah uh, I've seen bits and pieces. It scares me. It shows terrifies the shit out of me. So, seems like that show came from my mind, so I don't watch it. <laughs> that's it, what I just. Uh, that's what I discovered earlier about you in horror. You don't watch horror because it's all already happening in your head. <laughs> I wouldn't say it was horrific. It was more. Most of them are just like, that's a bit depressing. Ah, uh, okay. The, the, I th probably there's watch at more least of them. one where you're like. That's nice. You know, you know when there's an airplane and you hear an airplane overhead? Uh-huh. Well, I hope to hear it overhead. I'd be scared shitless if I heard it underneath me. It, that would yeah, be problematic. That would be problematic. But, like, every time I hear an airplane, my first thought is, I wonder if that's going to crash into our house and kill us all. Yep. I have that thought regularly. Uh, especially because I don't know what it is with the with the winter weather we've been having. We get we get like a, a temperature inversion, and the sound from the airplanes bounces off the temperature inversion, so it sounds like they're flying really low over my house. And I I've a couple nights I've just been like that one sounds like it's just gonna crash right into my house. Yep, it's really loud. <laughs> Yeah. I wonder if it's gonna clip my my living room. That's that's the one thing, Darsh. I don't have a therapist. You I tried wow. in a Canadian economy. You're a gold right mine in waiting. <laughs> I I did try and uh, yeah, no. I'm sorry. I was really put <laughs> off. I was really put off by one that was like. Um, all mental trauma comes from your past. Uh, there's no such thing as like chemical imbalance or anything. It's something happened in your past, and we have to talk to, about your past to find out what it was that. And it's like, okay, I'm done. I tried it once, but I got really offended because every single week, therapists would just show me these fucking ink drawings of my parents <laughs> having fights, and I just couldn't cope with it. <laughs> Oh, Pixie, it's like, I can't leave the fireplace on if no one's on the main floor with the fireplace, because I'm like... <laughs> I couldn't say what I wanted to, Dad. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, okay. Wrestling, okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. So. Well, me and Daddy are just wrestling. Let's get back on track because there is a couple other things to talk about. We had a track. Where, where did, what, what track? I'm out That's here. What in did it, the eh? That was ocean. Line, there ain't right no there. track. Oh, man. I mean, there's a series of guidelines, sort of like half laid. Like, I don't know. What were you gonna say? Anyway, continue right. on our your 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 attempt to segue us back on topic. Oh my god. Look, I'm tired. <laughs> it's too. been a really hard day playing Power World all day. It's rough. Yeah, that's okay. Rough. That's rough. It's been a it's been a tiring day. Um no, it's it's a new year. Twenty twenty four. We noticed, yeah. Yeah, we noticed. That's good. Yeah. Twenty twenty four, this is yeah. 
this year is 12 years of development? 2012. Sorry. I mean, 12 years since the project launched. This year is 12 yep. years of project. Um, I, I expect, you know, CIG are probably, you know, this month and next month having all those meetings where they decide, you know, what they're Stomach doing time. this year. Yeah. Um, do you think they're filming much of that? And do you think we'll get to see much of it throughout the course of the year? The summits? No, they never, they never film them. They are, they occasionally sometimes show they're like, they like point the camera at the room with like tons of people and they're like, Hey, look, they're having yeah. a summit. Um, they don't usually share the results of it directly. We sometimes see the outcomes of their summits, but, um, I don't think we're going to get like video of it. So what do you think we're going to get this year? Um, well, if the stars align, um, there's a lot of depth in that. Anyway, uh, if the stars <laughs> yeah, align... Say, what, is that on the roadmap? <laughs> if the stars align, uh, preferably static server meshing and uh, pyro in live. Um, that's the That's the goal, I think. To get this this lumbering beast off the ground, you know. <clears throat> this is the part where you like you've put out, you know, you're setting up a tent and you put out all the tent pegs and everything's ready to rock, and then you gotta pop it up, like see if it stands. But putting it up <laughs> takes like twelve seconds, though. Like once you've got everything ready, it's like, bit yeah, unless, boom, unless you bombs your uncle. Up the first, the first twelve parts of it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm. It's it's hard to. It's hard to guess what we're gonna get. Oh, very hard. Yeah. Even for them, I think. I think it we know very much on how things go. We know what we want. We all want server meshing, right? That's. Yeah, that's the goal. That's the goal. What else? Like, I, I guess my problem. I've been coming a lot lately to... I, I keep coming back to the pillar talk that they had, which is sort of the last time that we had... Oh, Vulcan, yeah, yeah, good shout. Vulcan's nice. But, like, that pillar talk episode was the last time that we had sort of the big wigs of Star Citizen in a room talking about what was missing, talking about what was, like, the the things coming next... And we haven't really had that. Even at, at uh, CitizenCon this year, we didn't really get something like that. So No. I think they want to avoid that kind of like super far-looking future stuff now. Because, especially because um, uh, persistent entity streaming went so poorly. Um, it was so much harder than they had expected it to be. <clears throat> um, I think that that... I think they're more focused on the here and now, especially because the here and now is server meshing. Like it's, it's not like you know, the stuff they're working on right now is ships or the only ships or only, you know, props. Right now, their big project is server meshing and, you know, transitioning to Vulcan. <laughs> this is like big pieces. <laughs> um, I would imagine though that, yeah. the, not so much maybe the transition to Vulcan, but. You, the use of Vulcan is at least a little bit more in the realms of expected outcomes than, hey, shit, let's see what happens if we put in persistent entity streaming and static server meshing, mesh, uh, meshing at the same time. And then they're like, yeah, but Vulcan, at least we know it's made to just run. Yeah. Yeah, and it, I mean, it is a big project, but it you know, at the mm. end of the day, you know it's pretty likely at the that you're going to be able to get the thing to run. <clears throat> um, we don't have full server meshing. No, we won't have we... Full, full server meshing for many years. I think. Um, I shouldn't say many years. Not this year or next year. I don't think. No. Uh, dynamic server meshing? No. It's free. Oh, I dynamic. Think that's a lot Static. Of yeah. No, full server meshing is dynamic server meshing. It's it's yeah. the whole thing running itself and and deciding for itself when it's going to spin up new servers, 
and so on and, so, and reallocate servers and like it's all the whole autonomous yeah. thing um that is a lot harder i think than doing a static server merge um so that one i think is a is a ways away static server meshing i think they can achieve this year unless something goes wrong um i mean that was the big thing at citizen con right they showed off yeah we can do it we we yeah. did it it worked yes it was this tiny little you know sandbox world but we can do it in hell they set up a static, static server mesh on one machine yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> which is really um really cool but, <laughs> um they but uh yeah i think um i think that it's and i don't think they're as worried about that transition that that one can take a while right you can launch star citizen with a static server mesh if yeah. you want yeah yeah <clears throat> You don't need dynamic. Dynamic makes it more efficient to run, like from their end, from the back yeah. end. It saves them money. <clears throat> yeah. It saves uh, money. yes. Just a second, Pixie. Okay. You got it. Okay. Um. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Pixie. <laughs> you gotta wait two seconds. For... I gotta. <laughs> you didn't last. You didn't wait long enough. I gotta figure out how to get rid of Nightbot. Honestly, I keep saying that. Yeah, I mean it's gotta um, be somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. Oh no! I'll watch that after. I don't know if. Uh -oh. <laughs> what is that? I'm highly concerned. It's us. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> what's that oh my god that's great it's just uh you know how they they always talk uh, politicians always talk about being taken out of context well that's your yeah. taken out of context moment <laughs> oh all right <laughs> look i'm i'm used to those <laughs> yeah oh, no, i was not... very hard to swallow that oh, was actually it. taken in context so <laughs> um so i want to talk about the elephant in the room because there is an elephant it is large it oh, is shit. pink and purple Jesus polka dotted Christ, dude it was just christmas look i'll lose some of it all right fuck off <laughs> i've been trying for a year um seriously we've talked about base building and how base building is going to be really important for the economy and how base building is really important for storage and you know we're going to want mining operations that you can set up a mining operation as a as a like an outpost and store the stuff and ship it and like and all of this stuff all comes back to the economy and i think we need to ask one where is the star citizen economy and two where are um quanta yep where I, are quanta where, where I, are quanta i i really I, yeah that's a very deep question david um that's what physicists everywhere want to know <laughs> <laughs> look i'm just asking I mean, the simple questions and well, no one's giving me an answer they're, they're, i would imagine that the two are intrinsically linked but I would also I I don't know if they would want to get that system fully integrated now before they're in this state where they've even got static server mesh. Me blah, 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 uh, I don't know if they want to go ahead and put that in now. Strokes having a shiver, and then strokes having a shiver. Um, when they could just completely fuck the entire world up couple of years down the line enough to completely re-fucking do it. Possibly. <laughs> Call the Pondulous. <laughs> oh, that's a great that's name. Um, um, so... You know what? Do you remember... Okay, I want... Sorry, I'm, I'm gonna tangent. I'm gonna do a big tangent for one second, then you can go back to what you were saying, Eric, but... Do you remember back in the day 
when we started this shit, it was a podcast and six F's and caps would spend hours every week just cutting out all of the ums that we said because ums don't work well on a podcast and we say um so much and he would cut out every single um and it would be oh. so much shorter. yeah yeah <laughs> three hours of talking 12 second podcast um <laughs> And, and we weren't even doing the um, you know? Sorry, go ahead, uh, Eric. I, I apologize. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is honestly the biggest unknown after this Citizen Con is because they really didn't even mention the economy. Um. Uh, we know there has been some shakeup in that direction, I think, but um, I would suggest, I, I would suspect that they are probably um, they're probably hoping to get the economy up and running, like a simulation, like an economy simulation up and running, roughly at the same time as the static server mesh comes online for pyro even just to start testing things you know mm. even if it's just in like the um even if they just store it up and and get it um online in the um the the what the hell is it called the the test, test branch space. the test branch thank you um the the experimental branch that they're that they set yeah. up where they're going to test features. Tech preview. Um, thank you, Tech preview. Thank you. My brain lost that specific lingo. Um, yeah, so I do expect I would expect to see something about it this year about like an actual economy of simulation up and running. Um, at least in the tech preview branch. That's that's my expectation. It, it would make sense as well to wait until at least static server meshing because surely the way it would work isn't going to be hinged upon the type of server meshing. You know, it's like, okay, we, we know it's going to work. Server meshing's in there. Uh, it, fucking hell, why is that so difficult to say? <laughs> um, yeah, it, it makes it makes more sense to wait at least until static server meshing, but they could possibly fake it couldn't they as well if they wanted to well Just it's pretty it, hard you know. to fake how do you how do you how do you fake it mm. like most games do mm. I like guess. they can they can fake it right now with like and, and um the only reason to fake it would simply be so it's like okay we, we can start doing some basic work on like here's a uh, first iteration GUI of how we want this to work, how we want this to be presented, please give us some feedback, but at this point, I would imagine that they're more concerned with, please, please tell us how badly the game is burning please, we, we'd like yeah. to know that first and foremost <laughs> I don't expect them to just I, I, honestly, I think they could just leave it as it is now, I don't think they need to put in a system where they try and fake prices going up and down, mm. or anything like that supply and demand I, I think that they will probably just leave it as it is currently until they get some basic form of the simulation running alongside the um, as a service alongside the replication layer or whatever, um, mm. <clears throat> which as I think is how it's gonna how it's gonna work. So do you think we're still going to see Quanta? Like we didn't hear anything. Yeah. We haven't heard anything about it. We haven't heard anything it, about it since it was it, for two years. It, it's intrinsic to the game. Even if it's going to get a new name or something like that, the the basic system idea, the core idea is intrinsic to the game. You need a background yeah. simulation, and they want that to be running 24-7. So, yeah, we, it will absolutely come. It, it may not be what was told X amount of time ago, but it, it's, it's intrinsic. It's a core part of the MMO. Yeah, I... I think at the very least you're gonna the, the the core idea of having you know way more other people than there are players, um, whether whatever form that takes, um, if it's not called Quanta or whatever, I think that that 
is going to remain in place. So yeah, I think it's going to happen. Okay. Agreed. Okay. Um, but I would, I mean, there's a bunch of other things that are starting to fall into place for them. I expect that they're going to want this to fall into place soon too. At least like a, a you know, what do they call tier zero implementation where, mm. you know, things start to happen dynamically, um, even if it's limited to specific resources or whatever. I mean, we haven't heard from Tony in a long time. Yeah, I don't but think then heard in years. In years, but then we haven't really heard from a lot of people in years. Like, when's the last time we heard from Aaron or Melissa Strada? <laughs> Melissa Strada, yeah. Uh, we we saw Aaron last year, didn't we? At some point. Uh, I, I remember seeing him. I don't remember. It's you know what? For some reason, it's getting kind of hard to uh, keep the last twelve years in um... <laughs> in your head. Yeah, Theaters of War when. I don't think we're getting Theaters of War anymore, to be honest. Um, I don't think, think we're going to get it. straight to video. Yes. Yeah. I was quite proud of that one. That was good. I like it. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's going straight to On Demand. Um... So, I've got another question for everyone, and I want everyone to chime in on this one. I need everyone? Shave. That's what to ask. I need to shave. My beard's getting a bit long. Um, is this the year that Star Citizen Pinocchio's? Is this the year that it becomes a real boy? Um. No. Ooh. Um. Oh, this one's hard. It de see that's the problem is like it really depends very much on how things go. Like, it could. You know, June could June could <laughs> me June could roll around. We're not wasting time. No. Well, yeah. June look, we're around. prognosticating. We're prognosticators. Yeah. June could roll around and they could go, yeah, we got static server meshing ready and we're going to roll it out and it works great. And you can go through a jump point and it works and, you know, yeah. you can go to another system. Yeah, or, Monica Belushi is going to kick down my happen. door and demand to use me as a piece <laughs> of furniture in her living room. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I'm going to say probably It could not. happen. Fucking what? What I think is going to happen, though, is I think that um, Star Citizen will take a bit of a backseat here for a bit, because I think we're probably going to get heavily into the ramp up to Squadron soon. And um, and whereas I think there will be a lot of development work on Star Citizen, I think a lot of focus will shift away from it in terms of like public attention and even players' attention. So I... Yeah. I disagree. Okay. Um, I think we're actually a lot more likely to hear a lot more about Star Citizen this year, and I think they're going to keep Squadron quiet until CitizenCon, which I think this year's CitizenCon is going to be entirely about Squadron and, like, the blow the barn door open and show everyone all that's been I going on back there. I on that. I, but, I reckon if if we're gonna get a big citizen squadron forty two reveal at sitcom this year, I, I reckon we're gonna spend twenty twenty five doing a year of hype for end of that year release. But, but I, I, I genuinely think that they're gonna do a year of marketing for squadron. I don't think yeah. it'll be a year. I That's think it's going to want to actually avoid the Christmas season because Christmas season tends to be overcrowded. I think it's going to want to launch summer. 
if you can launch summer people are hey, people are off work kids are off work like people can take their vacation like summer is when you launch a game i i think we're personally, gonna get a... what are, personally where i'm looking for an announcement not not a release date announcement but i'm gonna say a public hype trailer type of deal I'm expecting to see something at um, Summer Games Fest to make the broader world known that, that it's coming. I think what's going to happen is CitizenCon, they're going to give us a lot of detail. They're going to show us stuff, yeah. and they're not going to give us a release date. And then, I, I hope. And then at the Game Awards yeah. this year. Huge event. Which is the biggest event in video games? That's when they get the release date. I would rather they do a release date at the Game Awards than at CitizenCon. Honestly, uh, what do you guys think? Because that's that might be a controversial opinion. I'll be right back. I think that's going to be really hard call for them to make internally because there's going to be some feeling that they need to be um beholden to the people that got them here type of deal so i think they have to have a lot of long discussions about whether delaying a release date announcement until the game awards a more public event is um good for the game or whether it's going to upset the community outrageously because you know it didn't happen at a star citizen event that that's why I genuinely think it's going to be announced at CitizenCon first and foremost. Because, because I, yeah. I I don't see how it could go any other way. You know, Chris Roberts I mean, is going to turn around. Oh, cool, it could go say, other ways. But well, I I don't know. I get the impression he's going to turn around on stage and say, "You guys paid for this. You guys need to be the first to know. We are beholden to you as you are the investors in the game. You are whatever you want to think of it as." I think it's a good PR move if they say, you know, all right, we're announcing it here, it's official, bam, the release date is this. I have absolutely uh, zero doubt that there will be a trailer for Star uh, for Squadron 42 or even a, like an extended thing for Squadron 42 at the Game Awards, but I am very much on the fence about whether the the um release it. date is there or CitizenCon. Go. What are they going to do? end of system con or whatever chris is just gonna be there and like hey everyone here's a trailer for squadron 42 dead silence this squadron uh, this, this squadron this trailer plays and then right at the very end release date and then you just see chris go <laughs> <laughs> no i you know what i think they could actually do oh. and i think that people i i hope that people would understand it would be, hey, you know, here's what we're coming at with. We're, we've got all this stuff on Squadron. We're getting ready. Release date is going to be next year. We have the date. Uh, and and I think, like Chris should say, tune into the Game Awards where we will announce the actual release date. I can because... see that, that being a, a, a reasonable alternative. I also would... I also could see definitely having like Chris and Mark Hamill or Gary Oldman Awards? or something like come out on stage at the Game Awards to right? talk about it. Yeah, for sure. Like it's like we want it at our event, but I think it's better for the game and for CIG as a company if they do it at the Game Awards. Because if they do it at Star Citizen... I agree, er, sorry. And I, I agree. They, and I think that's what their, I think that's what their argument's yeah. going to be about. <laughs> but if they do it at CitizenCon, then there's going to be, like, all those negative articles are already going to come out and people will see them and it will fizzle out. If it happens at the Game Awards, then everyone actually sees it. Mm -hmm. Right? If it's at CitizenCon, yeah. all those people that they won't see it in person and their opinions might be shifted more know, anyway i, I don't know I, I, still, I, I still think the the you know the the negative take gaming magazines or whatever it'd be like you know the fucking really most expensive video game in history finally has announced release date 
I, I could see that spanning over there and people being over like, oh, what's this? The most expensive video game? Let me have a look into it. And, you know, mm-hmm. publicity oh, is publicity. I fully believe, I fully believe that, that Star Citizen's bad press over the years has not hurt it. Mm. <laughs> I agree. I just think that the Game Awards is more press. No, and, yeah, for sure. No, and I, if they've I already... And I 100% understand what you're, what you're saying. Yeah. Because I do think that there is that dichotomy where they're like, well, it's better for the longtime fans if we announce it at our event, whereas it's better for the broad, you know, gaming exposure to announce it at Game Awards. I just don't know. I'm not sure which which side they're going to fall on. That's all. Now I want to, so we can we can um, belabor this for as long as we want, but oh, we're yeah. we're not really getting anywhere. Um, I want to actually go back to what started this point, which was the discussion of whether or not we were going to get more Squadron or Star Citizen content this year. And I want to quickly make my point for that because I haven't made my point. Um, Mm -hmm. I think we're going to get actually a great year for Star Citizen because a lot of, I think a lot of the development of Star Citizen the past couple of years has actually been hindered because they've knuckled down on Squadron and they've, like oh, yeah. they've they've like zipped lips full steam ahead squadron working on nothing else but now lots of those teams are now on star citizen which yeah, means i th- i think we're going to get more locations more ships more gameplay features A map and radar map and like we are (laughs) going to start seeing a lot more this year for star citizen than we have in previous years i think we'll start seeing the more important i don't want to call them the smaller thing i don't think we're going to see stuff as big as a whole new huge ship being announced and then released the next month i think that will happen you know at the the same frequency it's happening now but i do think that exactly the same reason that you said those teams are going to be working on getting the features we have polished looking at doing the next iterations uh and actually looking at the proper mechanics to get to a degree where it's like this is the you know working towards the fucking gold standard for star mm-hmm. citizen yeah. you know what i think we might also have a lot this year Really quickly, sorry, Eric, and then I'll let you go. No, no, that's okay. I, I think we might also have a lot, like, they're going to be integrating a lot of the features that they've finished for Squadron into Star Citizen, and I think hmm. they're going to be they're going to be doing that to take a lot of feedback from Star Citizen to possibly adjust those features in Squadron 42 without needing a lengthy beta and stuff. Like, they're going to... We're gonna get this this radar and and map into Star Citizen so that people can use it and then we can see what they're saying and we can fix it for Squadron if we need to, you know? Absolutely. I completely agree on that. And that, that was sort of the beauty of their approach was like they wanted to put it on the squadron's teams because they wanted to finish the feature without it having to release it constantly. Um yeah. and so the feature is finished. But now they can use the uh, the persistent universe to test the feature, and they're in polish phase now, so they can go, "What is our polish data, right? Like, what are, what is the information we need? Well, we have all these players who are using it, and we can see it being used, and we know what the problems are. There, there's bug reports, there's issue council stuff. You know, we got all the all the information, so we can polish it properly, uh, which is a big bonus for a single player game. Actually, having, you know. Being able to release the feature without releasing the game, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, I, I completely agree with that. What I was going to say before is that what I said before, I kind of, I don't think I, I really made my point very well. My point was that I think the public hype for is going to be bigger for Squadron this year than I think the mm. attention of the gaming world will be more shifted to Squadron than Star Citizen. And I think in the background, Star Citizen is going to be getting a lot better. I agree with you. I think a, I think all of a sudden we're going to have this wave of features, like you said, that have been worked on for a couple, two years, um, that are going to just 
flooded. And I mean, we saw that. We saw the like insanely cool map and radar and and like blew our freaking minds a couple months ago. <laughs> the, the, honestly, to me, the radar uh, is neat, but I don't give a shit. Honestly, I expect that. That rate, I, it's good, but I expect that in a AAA game. What huh? excites me the is map. is the FPS looting. Ooh, that's the like the like the quick loot, and then the more in depth loot. Where, like that is that's cool. I always like, pictured you as more of a banjo guy. I love the loot. Loot's a beautiful instrument. Yeah, you're pretentious enough to say that. Yeah, I am absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I would I love a loot. You have a mandolin for the weekends as well. I don't, but you know what I did do years ago? This is the first bass I ever owned. Right here? This is my first bass guitar. I once took a hammer to it to try and, and break it because I was punk. Uh, it didn't work. But a couple of years ago, I um, I removed all the frets and filled them and made my own fretless. That's nice. That's a nice idea. Cool. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, I am pretentious as fuck. I've got a, a homemade fretless bass. <laughs> hey, David's like I, I'm pretentious, and I brought receipts. <laughs> oh, one hundred percent. I'm a pretentious bastard, and I love oh, it. I love it. Um, I agree, Madraga. Scanning absolutely. Um, these are like these are fundamental things that I'm so excited to get into the game. Big reworks on scanning, um, radar, maps, um, looting, the whole all the stuff we saw, right? Yeah. All the stuff we saw yeah. at CitizenCon. Um, now they're they're back. Improvements. CIG are back. What next week? The week after? I think they're back now. They're back. Oh, the, I, no, 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 but like you mean which show? I see. Yeah, I think they're open. I think this week they're back. Actually, yeah, I believe. I think it's so next this... next week we'll have an actual show with stuff to talk about. Yeah. Um. So I know we're idiots, but for by choice rather than necessity. Yes. Yeah. Hey, I, you know what? Hey, all things considered, we've filled an hour and tw an hour. How long do we do this? An hour and twenty minutes. An hour, an hour, yeah. It's an with hour and a half. mostly with mostly on topic, reasonable conversation. Yep. I'm gonna give We're us not... a. I'm gonna give us a sparkling sixty percent. Yeah, that's. <laughs> you know what? That's the majority. Majority rules. No, I'm not <laughs> very good at maths, but I think sixty percent seems very generous. Fifty-one to forty-nine. I said, I said it was sparkling. There is, there's a great song. Uh, I think it's by the the Tragically Hip. Uh, mm -hmm. Fifty-one to forty-nine. Which, uh, which is when uh, the province of Quebec it it enshrines oh, in yes. song the time that the province of Quebec uh, voted to whether or not to leave Canada. And to become its own country. Where are they going to go? I mean, they weren't going to go anywhere, though the rest of Canada very, very willingly would have handed them chainsaws to cut them off and push them out to sea. Um, but it was, it was a, the vote was literally 51 to 49 to remain part of Canada rather than to separate and be their own thing. And there's a great song by the Tragically Hip that, that commemorates that. And fifty-one to forty-nine. It's even. It's it's even worse than that. The vote was fifty point yeah. six percent to forty-nine point four. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it, it, it was, we, we almost did our own Brexit. <laughs> it was in nineteen ninety-five, though. <laughs> I remember. I still remember that. God, I was. I remember. I remember. I was ten. My mom literally took me, and we went driving around the city because she couldn't watch. Yeah, the TV. She was just too nervous. It was frightening. Like it was. It's a major part of Canada that was. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. This is a complete there was like, tangent. 
We yeah, we we're, we're losing our sixty percent. God damn it! <laughs> Tangentially related. And I know we're uh, just about done, but I've got a really important wait, wait, question. Wait, you're going off on a tangent from a tangent. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh no, that's Alberta. Um, is Alberta the capital? <laughs> Uh, Ottawa is the capital. Alberta Ottawa. is the fuck. Alberta is the Texas of Canada. Yeah. So what's the capital of Australia? I always forget that. Um, it's um uh... Melbourne. No, yeah. it's not Believe... Melbourne. It's not Sydney. No? It's not Melbourne. Um... No. All right. Fuck. See, it's... the problem is. Look, Canberra, the problem, that's what it is. Jeez. The problem is it's in the, the southern hemisphere and no one cares. Oh, wow. Here we go. Man, we've Jesus gotten so Christ. canceled do you, do you by know everybody in Australia how many at this point. fucking marsupials you've just offended. <laughs> Come on. That was a good callback. There are like oh, five man. fucking koala bears that just fucking Look, okay. dropped out of a tree in shock from that. Pass and I were sitting at dinner with Link the other day. And we were talking about uh -oh. um, about our income per pay because the government of Canada's pay system is fucked. And we were talking about per pay, per pay, this per pay, that per pay. And Lincoln was like, it's not per pay, it's Pompeii. And we started laughing because that was <laughs> fucking hilarious, right? Beautiful. Beautiful. And then we switched and we were like, okay, I make this much Pompeii. And Cass was like, I make this much Pompeii. And we started just, you know, playing with it because Pompeii. And then Link later on in the conversation was, it's it's not Pompeii, it's Perpay. <laughs> Fucking call he's back like, us. He's like, no, I, th I think you were right before. This doesn't make sense. <laughs> Cass would call back us and he's four and he's Telling better jokes than I do. Um, really interesting question. I know my, my jokes are horrible. I don't know why anyone watches me. It's because of YouTube. Um, my truck, um, I'm very sorry that you've had to watch this show. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> my truck, I apologize profusely for um, me. I apologize for David too. <laughs> I'd say that I'd say that I actually love Australia, but I firmly believe that Australia is not a real country. It's actually run by the spiders, and the spiders have infested the brains of everyone that lives in Australia. And it takes the most attractive Australians and sends them out into the world to attract more people to Australia, so the spiders can live in everyone's brains in Australia. I firmly believe that, and that's why so many Australians are so hot. And is that why, is that why, is that, so the, like the Stingray was just trying to free Steve Irwin from his enslavement? Yeah, from the spider, okay. yeah. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> I see. Um, so... You okay there, Shiver? <laughs> <laughs> I'm about as uh, comfortable as a spider hiding underneath the toilet seat. I want to end this, but I've thought of a really good question, and do you two mind if I ask this question before we, we wrap up? Yeah, as long as I know it's really late for you, Shiver. I know, I'm going to throw it to Shiver, but it's also really late for Shiver. I'm asking Shiver. It's a quick question. I mean, I don't know. We should probably form uh, maybe some sort of uh, committee or some sort yeah. of club to discuss it. Um, okay. Perhaps um i mean that then it comes down to what the hell could we name this and i'm personally in favor of the committee for the liberation and Integ integration of terrifying organisms and their rehabilitation into society but the downside of that the abbreviation for that is clitoris clitoris no that's the upside well I don't know. You you, no no the, the best up, no the the real upside of it is no one can ever find us we're a mess I'm really happy with that one, actually. <laughs> All right. Okay. I mean, ask your question. We know that a lot of the the um, work on Squadron is going over to Star Citizen. That's great. We know that at some point the work on Squadron is going to be complete 
and there will be like a small shadow team left for patches and such. Do they all move over to squ to Star Citizen, or do they start on Squadron Two? I think they all move over to Star Citizen until it's done. Like done isn't they can get it like one point out. Okay. Yeah, I I, I really I think would that they're gonna going want. Go ahead, Dishira. I think I think they're going straight to Episode Two because that that that's going to be like their uh mainstay bed bread and butter franchise. You know, that's their call of duty. Mm -hmm. That's what they're hoping. Well. I'm still going to, I'm making my call. I think that they will, for like a year or so, all shift over to Star Citizen to get it into shape. So um, do we... Th and then, yeah. and then go on to Squadron 2. Do we know when they did all of the uh, recordings, like the performance capture, did they do it for just one, like Squadron, or did they do it for all three? All uh, three? They did it... Oh, did that already done performance capture for all three games? I'm pretty sure they did it for at least the first two. I don't know why I have hmm. a strange feeling that, that Sandy wants a little bit of it or something. Or was it? It Chris wouldn't surprise me set? to see bits and pieces of it. Yeah. I mean, it couldn't have been all of it because they've even even for the first game they've had to go back and do reshoots a few times. Yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm, like, I mean, like may may have had to um, get the best captures from the most expensive um, uh, performers uh, and you know you don't want to try and book fucking is it Andy Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill you don't want to book names like that on a number of separate occasions yeah, you yeah, want to get sure. as much as you yeah well, well you, know, and, you, know, and, the, you know the solution to that you just kill them off well <laughs> honestly the worry is well no but that's that's the worry like they killed Mark Hamill that that's my worry is are they going to get through with Mark Hamill before honestly Mark Hamill dies? Wow, dude. I'm you sorry. You can't say things like that. <laughs> no, but like, do, do we? Do, did they grab everything? Dude, in dude's from... just out here trying to live his best life, and you're like, I know, and I hope die. he doesn't die ever. You're gonna fucking die, and all I'm worried about is my game, mate. You're gonna die. What about my game? Like that's that's the stuff. Well, no, but but hang on, because look, no, no, there. but they did. Hang on, because they the did Joker. that. With, but they did that with Star Wars. They killed him off. He's done with Star Wars. That's He's not genius. done with Star Citizen. Sure. All right, Shiver. You have a podcast over at twitch.tv slash table of horrors. And before you tell us what's going on over at twitch.tv slash table of horrors, I thought of a question during the show that I wanted to ask you. Have you ever done a podcast where you paint? Once. Okay. Cool. What do you got going on this week? Fun. Uh, this week, I'm hoping to get... Um bonus little game done uh it was meant to be done for christmas but mental health is a thing um for for pe people who are just in the community so there's there's still time if you want to pop into the discord and sign up to play in a vtm one shot let me know pop in uh other than that on friday night in our, our time zone now we have at 11 30 gmt utc uh vampire the masquerade of the dashes uh, it's getting towards the end. Things are getting spicy, and there is a there there is stuff coming. There is big stuff coming. Awesome. Yeah. Well, look, everyone in chat who's joined us, thank you so much. It's been a genuine pleasure to see you all again. I missed you, uh, Shiver, Eric. I missed you both. I always miss. It's good you to see you again. Happen. Are you doing that stupid you. thing too? I hate that. That to me is like, you know what that looks like to me? It looks like the world's smallest violin. Hate it. I hate anyway. it. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you so Have much. Have a great weekend. Love you all. <laughs> Have a great rest of your week. And uh, you know what? See you next week. I am excited.